It's under the blood of praises to name. I'm not what I used to be. My life has been changed. Got shackled by sin and shame. It's already gone. I'm happy reminding him it's under the times I've stumbled along this earthly way. I've failed a thousand times before, for that I am ashamed. I'm sorry for the things I've done. The Lord could hear my cry, but I rejoice to hear his voice. This was his reply. Victory was given. When you were born again, I washed your stained and sinful past, put new life within. No longer do you bear the mark that sin had brought your way. With happiness and peace of mind, you now can say, It's under the blood. Of praises to name. I'm not what I used to be. My life has been changed. Got shackled by sin and shame. It's already gone. I'm happy reminding him it's under the blood. Oh, what can wash away? It's a blessing when I see the dark clouds parting When the rain is gone and sun is breaking through I anticipate when life will just be normal Just to close my weary eyes and rest in you My heart can rest so easy when there's blue skies when the wind is gone and rain is not in sight how i long to hang my sword above the mantle away from harm and distant from the fire But I wouldn't know your peace without the hard times Or be thankful for relief without the pain I wouldn't love the light if it were not for darkness Or appreciate the sun without the rain How could I understand? Forgiveness without failure Or feel the warmth of love without the bitter cold How could I hold your healing hands without affliction And be blessed to see your mercies all unfold Sure it's a blessing to be saved 
safe, secure, and warm. But Lord, I want to thank you for the storm. sweet trophies that remind me of all you do sure it's a blessing to be safe secure and warm but lord i want to thank you for the storm i'm still safe secure Forsaken by his brothers, didn't fit the scene. Being made a slave was not what Joseph dreamed. The coat of many colors was stained with blood and lies. But from this divine appointment, a rule. another plan walk on and just say yes when god has another plan be assured that he knows best when all your dreams are shattered rest in his sufficient grace we don't have to understand another
Amen. Jesus. Good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. We appreciate you being here tonight. Looking forward to the good things of God. We appreciate another opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, we pray that you've had a wonderful week up to this point. Uh, looking forward to what God has in store for us tonight. Amen. Let me give you a couple announcements. We'll get right into service here tonight. Uh, don't forget coming up uh, this Sunday, Brother Ruben Cason will be with us. Amen. Talked with him earlier today. Uh, amen. He's excited, looking forward uh, to being with us. Amen. And share not only the work, but the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. We pray that you're here ready to uh, back him up, support him. Amen. We do appreciate him, all the work that he does, amen, for the state of North Carolina, helping out all the churches in the area. So, amen, you come and listen to Brother Reuben, uh, amen, on the 24th, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Uh, ladies will be having their auxiliary sale uh, right out here in the front yard here. Uh, ladies Auxiliary will be doing a yard sale. If you would like to sell some items, amen, you can just get a $10 spot out there. Uh, amen. The ladies will uh, be glad to let you have some spots and some room out there. And then we're going to turn right around. Uh, amen. If you'd like to buy some stuff, you can buy some stuff. It'll be out there. It'll be a blessing and a help to somebody. Uh, so, amen, you come. And, of course, backing up the ladies' auxiliary, we appreciate all the hard work they do. Amen. Uh, amen. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday will be homecoming. Uh, it's right around the corner coming soon. Amen. Brother Colby Davis will be with us. Uh, we're excited to have him preaching, excited to have him in service with us. We're looking forward to having Brother Colby come. Uh, amen. We're going to have a meal to follow that service. Amen. Again, excited about what God's going to be doing. Looking forward to a great time in the Lord there. Uh, amen. Man, then we're going to have that meal, no evening service on that day. And then also on the 28th, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Uh, we're going to have a special meal and a special service that Wednesday night. Uh, amen. If you're coming, we need to get an idea of how many is going to be here so we know how much to prepare for. So if you'll sign up back there, if you're going to be able to make it to 530 time, and then we're going to have regular service just right after that. Uh, amen. Not regular, but amen. I hope it's irregular. I hope the Lord just takes over, has right away in the service. But we're looking forward to that meeting that time. There's a sign-up sheet in the back, amen, for feeding the Parsons while they're here in revival. Uh, there's one slot left, amen. Amen. What a blessing, amen, to be able to help them. Uh, if, amen. If you've got some time and you would like to try to be a blessing and a help uh, under the Parsons family, they, they're on the road about 50 weeks out of the year. Uh, amen. And they never really stop to have a home-cooked meal. Uh, most of their stuff is experienced in an RV or a tour bus, and they're on the road constantly. Amen. They get Cracker Barrel and all those good things, uh, but ain't nothing like a good home-cooked meal. Amen. So if you've got some time and you can, uh, please sign up back there. Amen. Name the meal you're going to be cooking. Again, there's only one slot back there. And if you feel led to give them a bonus meal, they're not going to turn it down. Amen. There's five of them. They will certainly eat it. Amen. So be in prayer about that. Be in prayer about revival. Again, that'll be on the 2nd. Uh, amen running through to the 5th of October. It's just around the corner. It'll be here quick and soon. Amen. So we're excited about that. Looking forward to what God's got in store for us. Amen. Am I forgetting anything? Little Jeffrey's got a little birthday gathering right after uh, church here tonight. Uh, there's going to be some cake and some ice cream and some cupcakes or something back there, amen. It'd bless his heart if you'd stay, amen, and participate just a little bit. I know it's kind of long, and I know I'm long-winded. I'm going to try to be as quick as I can tonight, but amen, we're going to preach the word, uh, amen. And again, we just thank you for being here. Hope you can stay with us, celebrating that momentous, momentous occasion. You only turned nine once. Many of us wish we'd go back there, amen. Life was a lot simpler. Hey, man, the laundry just got done, brother. I mean, you have to worry about it. Hey, man, dishes got washed, meals on the table. What a great time of life that was. Hey, man. Hey, man. Now it's uh, who's cooking tonight. Hey, man. Hey, man. But anyway, we appreciate you being here. Looking forward to the good things of God. Let's stand to our feet. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Ask him to have right away in this service. We need his help and we need his touch tonight. Uh, we pray you've come seeking something from him. Amen. The Bible says uh, if you come seeking, you'll find it. Amen. If you come hungry, uh, that you'll be fed. Amen. We're looking forward to that here tonight. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. My precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do love you. God, we thank you again for the privilege and the opportunity, Lord, to be in your house here tonight. Uh, God, we thank you for these that have come out this way tonight, Lord, to gather to worship you. Lord, I pray that every part of this service, God, would give you glory and honor. Uh, Lord, from the offering, God, to the words of testimony, to the words of preaching, God, I pray that you would have your hand upon us. God, visit with your people one more time. Uh, rain down your presence. God, search the pews, search the aisles. God, search us inside and out. Uh, God, that we be better than when we got here. Lord, that we'll leave here changed. God, we'll give you all the glory and all the honor for it's yours and yours alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen tonight. Grab your song book. Let's turn to page 436 tonight. Amen. Page 436. Amen. Page 436. I'm glad I can't be moved. Amen. 
Amen. I'm glad I'm anchored in him. Amen. I'm glad for the fact that he has put something down on the inside of me that holds me still in a world that's ever changed. And I serve a God. Amen. The Bible says it changes not. And it's so good to know. Amen. I know where I'm going tonight. Amen. Page 436. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. In his love abiding, I shall not be moved. And in him confiding, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree. That's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Though all hell assail me, I shall not be moved. Jesus will not fail me, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. On the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Amen. Go to your left, your right, front, behind you. Wave at somebody, smile at somebody. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them how glad you are to see the Lord tonight. <laughs> Brother Daniel. Amen. Again, we appreciate you being here tonight. Looking forward to what God's got in store for us. Amen. If I can have a couple ushers, uh, we're going to take up tithe and offering, give you an opportunity to give unto the Lord. Uh, you just be obedient in your giving. Amen. Be a cheerful giver. Uh, amen. We know the Lord will take it and be a blessing of it. Uh, amen. Up here at the front, we've got a... Uh, uh, our same drop-off box, amen, we're calling it God's Storehouse. Uh, from here for the next foreseen time, amen, we're going to keep building up the storehouse. Uh, amen, the Bible says bring all your goods unto the storehouse, amen. Bring your tithes and offering unto Him. If the Lord's laid on your heart to give a special offering or give a different offering, you can always put it in your tithing envelope and mark it as such. And there's also a box up here you can drop that in, amen. It'll be a blessing and a help to the church, amen. It'll be a blessing and a help unto the Lord, amen. Brother Ethan, would you say a blessing over the offering tonight, brother?
again, we appreciate you tonight. We love and appreciate each and every one for being here. Amen. Looking forward to what God's got in store for us here tonight. As we change our gears going into our prayer and meet night, amen, our midweek service, amen, where we get renewed, rejuvenated by the word of God. Uh, amen. We do have a lot to be in prayer for. Amen. As a church, as a nation, as a people, uh, we know we need the Lord's touch in these last days. Uh, amen. Uh, God is really revealing himself more and more. And I believe the more he does, it aggravates the world. Uh, but you can mark it down. I believe the Lord's turning soon. Amen. I believe he's coming back to get his people. And I believe it could be even tonight. Amen. The moment, the twinkling of an eye. Amen. We'll be raptured out of this place. I pray that we're where we need to be with the Lord. Amen. Because uh, he comes like a thief in the night. Amen. That's what the Bible says. And he'll come to take us out of this place. And amen. I pray for the sin sick, the lost in my family, uh, the sin sick and lost. Amen. All over this world, in our community, in our towns. Amen. In our workplaces. Uh, those that we know. Amen. That are lost and undone and seeking need of a Savior. We're praying for them tonight. Uh, do remember Brother Buddy and Sister Margaret, uh, Sister Sister Jean Miller, Sister Jean Penny, Sister Jean Miller uh, has contracted COVID again from somewhere in her family, somewhere around about there. So, amen, do be in prayer for her. She said it's a very light case, uh, but I told her, amen, be best, amen, from a distance to worship the Lord, uh, amen, until she gets the clearance therein, amen. We don't need no scares. We don't need nothing spreading here at the church. Uh, but, amen, be in prayer for her, be in prayer for her family, of course. Uh, be in prayer for, again for Sister Jean Pennington, amen, and her body. Uh, God will continue to strengthen her and give her what she needs. Uh, amen. Do remember all our sick. All our shut-in, amen, those that are likewise could be here and will not be for whatever reason. Uh, do remember that tonight. Remember those that have lost the burden. Uh, pray for revival, amen, that's coming up this way. Talk to Brother Kyle Cody, amen. He is excited. He is fired up. Uh, amen. He's excited about what the Lord's laid on his heart. I pray it'll be something that changes this church. Amen. Listen, I don't have to be the one preaching to see a change in the church. Amen. I just want to see God do it. Amen. And God will change the church. He's the only one that's able. Uh, amen. He'll change our hearts. He'll change us. And I pray that revival will be more than something that's two weeks worth and we go back to the way it was. Amen. I pray revival will change us. Amen. And we'd be different. Amen. From that day moving forward, I pray souls will get saved. Amen. I believe life will be changed. Uh, amen. Churches gather all together and amen. We can just see God I'll just move and manifest his glory. Amen. Anybody else have a prayer request tonight? Go ahead, Sister Lindsay. Amen. Yes. that tonight uh, amen that's cancer seems to touch everybody everywhere amen but we know God's certainly able he can certainly remove that and do the work amen we trust in him tonight amen anybody else tonight go ahead sister Wanda amen Man, do remember those tonight. Anybody else? Go ahead, brother. Yes. Amen. Amen. Remember that tonight. Amen. Anybody else? Don't leave anybody out. Go ahead, Brother Troy. Amen. Yes.
That's right. Amen. 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 Do remember that tonight. Uh, do remember all our visitors we had Sunday. Amen. What a what a house full it was. And amen. We appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate the response to the altar. Amen. I pray that God just really just amen bless and help them. Amen. It's not easy. Uh, we know that, amen, those that have taken that long walk, amen, and come in repentance, uh, turning back unto the Lord, amen, we know the devil fights us tooth and nail, I pray that God would just bless and help their past, amen, give them strength, uh, rejuvenate them, amen, as they go along their way, amen, do remember that as well, anybody else tonight, go ahead, Brother Brown, amen, amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. Do remember that. Amen. Remember Brother Ethan. Amen. As he climbs up there. Amen. That God would just bless and help him. Uh, amen. Protect him. Put a hedge about him. Amen. We know God's able. Amen. There's nothing that the Lord can't do. Anybody else tonight? Don't leave to make. Yes. Amen. Amen. Do remember that. Amen. It's nothing easy to go through that. Amen. Do remember that tonight. Anybody else? Don't want to leave nobody out. Amen. All right. How about an unspoken prayer request by uplifted hand? Amen. All that can and will, let's come down to the altar tonight. Let's bring these needs unto the Lord. Amen. Trust in Him tonight uh, to give us what we need. Amen. Be in prayer for the service tonight. Be in prayer for one another. Amen. Remember. As we call it unto the Lord, amen, the Bible says he's a present help in time of need, and we know he's certainly able to meet each and every one that's been called out here tonight. Let's just lift it up unto the Lord, amen. My precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do love you. God, we thank you again for the privilege and the opportunity, Lord, to be in your house here tonight. Uh, God, we pray tonight, Lord, for these requests that have been turned in. Lord, you've known every one of them before we even made mention of them. Uh, God, down in our hearts, Lord, we have hearts, desires that, God, I pray that you would meet. Along with these needs, God, Lord, we pray for those that are sick, those that are afflicted. Uh, God, we pray for our young people that are afflicted tonight. God, we pray for our young couples that are afflicted. God, we pray for our elders tonight. Uh, Lord, I believe the devil is trying to own siege attack of the church. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would help it. Uh, God, that you would administer unto it, God, and give it your saving grace and your mercies upon it. God, we pray for those that are not here tonight. Uh, God, that you would bless and help them. Pray for our sick. Pray for our shut-in. Uh, God, you know the need. Lord, I pray that you would just meet it in a mighty way. Lord, as we move into this next hour of service, God, I pray that you would just have right away in it. Uh, God, that we would give you the glory and give you the honor. Lord, I pray for my abilities, God, and the lack thereof. Lord, that you would just touch me and anoint me one more time. Uh, God, to preach your blessed word, God. Lord, that's what we need in the last days. We don't need fables. We don't need myths. We don't need stories, but we need to hear the word of God. God, I pray that you would saturate me with the Holy Ghost power to preach that which you would have said here tonight. Uh, God, help the hearer tonight. God, Lord, I pray that the word would go forth. Uh, God, it be a saturating thing unto the soul. Uh, God, that it would help us and lead us in all that we do. Uh, God, we pray for these, Lord, that have lost. God, these that are battling sickness and cancer. Uh, God, these that are battling personal things that we know not made mention of. God, for the unspoken request, Lord, you know all about it. And God, we lay it up in your hands because it's the best place we can put all of our problems, all our cares and all our troubles. For your word says that we can cast our cares upon you, for you care for us. And God, we thank you tonight. We just thank you for all that you're going to do. Bless us and help us. God, we'll give you the glory, give you the honor and the praise, for it's rightly yours tonight. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen tonight. Appreciate the opportunity to come down to the old-fashioned altar. Amen. That's where we can bring our concerns, our cares, uh, our problems, our issues, and we know the Lord will meet us there. Uh, amen. Again, we just appreciate you being here tonight. Appreciate the opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk. We pray that God would just give us something uh, that would help and bless you in a mighty way tonight. Uh, amen. It's just a simple thought the Lord has laid on my heart tonight, uh, and I just pray that it would be going forth. 
Uh, amen. The Bible says when you send out the word, it will not return void. And I pray whether it reaches us here tonight or somebody all over the world, uh, amen, or maybe just the preacher tonight, whoever it gets to, I pray that it blesses and helps. I hope it does each and every one of our hearts here tonight. The book of John tonight, chapter number 10, a uh, very familiar portion of Scripture, a uh, very familiar chapter and context. Uh, but amen, this is where the Lord has led us, and we're just going to obey Him tonight, trusting, amen, that He's able. The book of John tonight, chapter number 10, we're going to begin reading in verse number 4. John chapter number 10 tonight, verse number 4. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. Amen. I'm glad I know where I'm headed. Amen. I'm glad that heaven's my home. Amen. I'm glad that a dime came in my life where the Lord met me. Amen. And saved me from the road I was on and put me on a new path. Amen. I'm glad for the good shepherd. Amen. The Bible says that he will leave 99 and go and find the one. What a blessing it is to know that one day... You and I were the one, amen, that he came and found us right where we were, amen, and picked us up, amen, out of the muck and out of the mire, amen, and set our feet on a solid rock, he establishes our goings, amen. I'm glad for the good shepherd tonight, amen. The book of John, chapter number 10, verse number 4 is where we'll begin in our text tonight. John, chapter number 10, verse number 4. If you have your place, would you shout a big old amen tonight? Amen. The Bible says, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things that were he spake unto them. And then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life, and they may have life in it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, Seeing the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catches them, and scattereth the sheep. Oh, the hireling fleeth, but he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and have known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And lay down my life for the sheep, and the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment hath I received of my Father. My precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you tonight. God, I thank you for the reading of your word. God, I pray, Lord, that you would anoint me one more time. Uh, God, saturate me with your Holy Ghost fire that I may preach exactly what needs to be said here tonight. God, I believe in a day and hour in which we live, Lord, there are more and more that are confused about the voice that they hear. They're not certain of who it is or what it may come from. Oh, but God, I pray, Lord, that your voice would ring out in our ears. God, that it's still the still small voice that goes down into our hearts. God, it speaks louder than any other thing of this world. God, I pray, Lord, to use me one more time. Uh, God, hide me behind your cross, empty me of self, and fill me with your spirit. Uh, that, God, I may preach what needs to be said here tonight. God, we pray for those under the sound of the voice. God, we pray for those that will be joining us online. God, help us and bless us. We'll be careful to praise you. Give you all the glory for all that is said and done in this place. Oh, God, we thank you and we give you all the glory tonight. God, we ask all these things in the name above every name. The name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. All oh, God's people shouted. Be seated tonight if you can. I am interested, as was repeated several times, starting out in verse number 4, where the Bible says, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Tonight I want to preach your simple thought, and to your heart tonight, amen, just this simple thing. 
I know his voice. Amen. I'm glad tonight uh, that I am certain in who I belong to tonight. I, I am certain in this very thing. I, I know when he speaks uh, and I know his voice. Uh, it's good to know that I not only know his voice, uh, but the Bible says that he also knows my voice. Uh, it's good to know when I call out unto him uh, that he does not get me confused with somebody else. Uh, that I'm just not some random person. Uh, oh, but I am one uh, that he knows tonight. You say, Preacher, how is any of this possible? How does he know my voice? The Bible says he is the good shepherd. Amen. I'm glad for that shepherd that leadeth me beside the still waters. I'm glad for that shepherd that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'm glad for the good shepherd that in the presence of mine enemies, he lays out a, oh my goodness, he lays out a buffet that far supersedes China buffet and the Golden Corral buffet. Boy, I'm getting hungry. I'm glad tonight for what God gives. He is the good shepherd. He loves his sheep. And I'm glad I'm one of his tonight. The Bible shows us, Brother Troy, that he knows his sheep. If you read in the very first verse of chapter number 10, you'll find out that Jesus speaks of a specific a specific fold tonight. The Bible says that there's only one way unto him. Any other one that comes in any other fashion or way, the Bible refers to them as a thief and a robber. You understand tonight that there is only one way to the Father. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Any man coming to the Father, he must first come by me tonight. I'm glad to know that there's still just one way. I'm glad to know that the blood of Calvary it still flows unto this day. I'm glad that for the fold, amen, that stays faithful while he leaves and goes after the one. You understand tonight that God, the Bible says he changes not. If he was the way back in John chapter number 10, I'm just Christian enough. I'm just preacher enough. I'm just old-fashioned enough to believe this. He still is the only way tonight. I'm convinced. Uh, Brother Troy, there is no other way. Uh, the Bible says that the Lord makes a path. And that path, amen, is something that we should be on. For the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in that way in which he is sent. I'm glad tonight to know that my feet are solidly on the path. I, for understand this, there are two paths. I, there is a way which seems right unto man. I, but the path therein is of destruction. I, oh, but there is a path that is straight I, and it is narrow. I, honey, in order to go on a straight and narrow path, I, you have to trust the one before you. I, I'm glad I'm not following some preacher. I, I'm not following some man. I, but I'm following the good shepherd tonight. I, and when he speaks, I, I'm glad. I know his voice tonight you may be here tonight and you may say well preacher I hear all kinds of voices I don't know which way to go or which way to turn child of God God is not the author of confusion but he is the author and the finisher of our faith tonight in order to please God you must have faith you say preacher what good is faith I can tell you that the grain of a mustard seed worth of faith can move mountains tonight I trust in the shepherd who said if I can have it it's mine to bear if he said it's not for me I don't want no part of it tonight honey I would that God's people would understand that when we're led of God that God's not going to lead us away from his word he's not going to lead us away from his church he's not going to lead us in an opposite direction I've had several people in my life tell me I believe God's given me this and God's given me this opportunity and when God gives it to them honey it's almost like a spit in the face of God. Honey, let me say this. If God is leading you to something that pays you good, trust me when I say this. God's not interested in your money near as much as he's interested in you. I would tonight that we'd understand where God leads us is a direction in which we should be willing to go. Understand tonight, I want to follow him when he speaks. I've told you before, but there's a story about a shepherd over in the far land. And over there in Ireland is one of those places where there's just sheep everywhere. And buddy, you can smell them things. Sheep stink, by the way. There's never been a mind that, 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 that I, I, I can tell you when I'm in two places. I can tell you when I'm near a hog pen, and I can tell you when I am near a chicken pen. And I can tell you, I can tell you, I say I can tell you when I'm near sheep. 
They have a distinctive smell. You know what that smell is? Stank. It, listen, it goes beyond the I, and you pick up an A in there, and it stinks, brother. I mean, it is nasty. It's a stinking smell. And I got to thinking, my goodness, how in the world could a shepherd ever love something that stinks? I, and I got to thinking about me I, and all my nasty I, and all my filthy I, and all my not for good. I, and God still loves me anyway. I, honey, while I was yet a sinner, I, Christ died for me anyway. I, even though I stink from time to time, I, even though I've been rolling around in the mud and the nasty, I, I'm glad for a God uh, that corrects me in the way. Uh, Over in the far land of Ireland, Brother Troy, uh, uh, it is said even back in the times uh, uh, when the Jews had out their sheep uh, and the shepherds would stay with their sheep uh, when a new one was born. uh, That shepherd wanted to be right there involved in the moment. Uh, It wanted to be there at every birth. Uh, Can I say when I was born again, hallelujah, uh, when I was born again, uh, my Father which is in heaven uh, was present for that birth. Uh, Amen. My daddy may have been there when I drew my first breath on this side of eternity but when I was born for the second time my heavenly father he was there and present to rescue me that which was lost it was now found I'm glad to report tonight if you look back over in the times of Israel the times of keeping sheep go back to David even if you would when they kept those sheep they were present for every birth and that shepherd wanted to be involved in its life But can I tell you something about a sheep? They're stubborn. You ever wonder why the Bible calls us sheep? Well, some of us are just too stubborn for our own good. Yeah, man goes right there. You may not be able to shout on that, but that's just the truth of it. And the fact you don't shout means I'm hidden somewhere. Yeah, ma'am. You understand tonight that, that we all have a way we like things being done. And usually what one sheep does... The rest of them do. That's why it's important the shepherd keep order on the sheep. Because if one gets out of character, the next one's going to get out of character. They're going to go the wrong way. They're going to go guided in another way. And honey, sheep will get sheep lost. Oh, but the shepherd. (laughs) The shepherd has the best intentions for his flock. The shepherd wants to see his flock go the way he says to go huh, and do the things he wants to do. Huh. I'm reminded of the story, Brother Troy. I'm trying to get there. I just keep jumping all over the place tonight. Huh. That must be hunger pains. Huh. Understand tonight that, that, that there's a sheep every once in a while that just is, it, it is just wild. Huh. It has a mind of its own. Huh. It wants to go a certain way and do a certain thing. Huh. And that is young, learned from a young age. Huh. There are certain baby sheep that just won't mind. Huh. They won't do right. Some of y'all are shaking your head because you got some at home with you, amen, I, I understand where you're coming from tonight, I, you got some that are, are strong-willed, I, they got a mind of their own, I, they want to do what they want to do, and those shepherds, I, when they find that there's a baby that'll do that, I, the Bible uh, the Bible shows us that there are those that go astray, I, but those shepherds in the field, they'll go and they'll scoop that little baby up, and they'll take it and they'll break its leg, you say, man, that's awful, that poor little sheep, imagine if we do right, God wouldn't have to break us. Sometimes God's had to break our will and put us in places we never thought we'd end up, but God has to get our attention somehow. Yeah, man. There's been some of us that's probably had to go to a hospital visit. Some of us have lost everything we've touched. Sometimes we've touched something and it's turned to dust right before our eyes. Honey, let me say this. That's God trying to get your attention. All these little sheep, brother, they'll take that leg and they'll snap it. Oh, and that sheep cries, and that sheep cries, and it cries, and it cries. But he does not set the sheep back down. He takes that sheep, and he puts it close to him. Oh, hallelujah tonight. I'm going to have a fit here in a minute, Brother Troy. If I do, you pick up. The notes are up there somewhere. You understand tonight that when the shepherd pulls that sheep in close, even though he hurt it, even though he maimed it, he's going to get it closer than it's ever been before. Honey, if God has broke you a time or two, honey, if God has humbled you a time or two, if God has halted you a time or two, that was not the time that God was far from you. That was the time where you were the closest you've ever been before. You might I'd be here tonight and you wonder if God's really breaking me. Why is everything I'm touching being destroyed? Because God has got you right where he wants you. And if you can't humble yourself, God will tonight. That little baby sheep, he sticks it up in that, that little coat and he holds it. There's never a moment where that shepherd is not present in that little sheep's life. He'll walk with it. He'll talk with it. And you know what he does? He feeds it right out of his own hand. 
I wish somebody get a hold of that tonight. Uh, honey, there's been times myself uh, when I was stubborn uh, and I wanted to do things my way uh, uh, that God had to get my attention. Uh, and when he halted me uh, and when he humbled me, uh, it was still God that fed me. Uh, it was still God that drawed me close into his bosom. Uh, it was still God uh, that cared enough for me uh, to see to my every need. Uh, can I say this? Even in your disobedience, uh, God still loves you. Uh, even though in your stubbornness, uh, God still loves you. You, huh? and just you this huh? if he can get my attention huh? he knows how to get your attention tonight oh he, he he holds that little sheep and eventually brother Troy that little sheep his leg kind of gets back straightened back out he gets to where he can move and go again and when it can brother Brian he'll set that sheep down <laughs> and when he sets that sheep down every step that shepherd takes that little sheep is right there with him I mean, it's like his own shadow everywhere he goes. That little sheep goes with him. Uh, honey, can I say this unto you tonight? Uh, you remember the day that God saved you. Uh, beforehand, you were a wretch. You were a worm. Uh, you were a no good sinner. Uh, but the day God saved your soul, uh, all you could think about was him. Uh, all you wanted to be was in his presence. Uh, you couldn't wait to get back to the church house again. Uh, oh, that's how that little sheep is. Uh, it follows that shepherd everywhere he goes. Uh, if that shepherd was to stop, uh, he would run in to the back of his leg and you realize every once in a while because that little sheep won't leave his side he's still got food in his pocket hallelujah he's still got food in his pocket and he'll reach out and he'll give it to him while he's still walking I'm glad that God feeds me on the path that he sanctifies my body that he gives me what I need oh child of God hear me and hear me well tonight I'm glad I know his voice I'm glad he knows me and it would do good for the church uh, to start hearing the still small voice again you say preacher how do I know in this day and hour how do I absolutely know that voice well it's real simple tonight number one tonight I'm going to try to get to my introduction I'll do a little preaching y'all alright amen God's voice number one tonight steals you there's been many a storms that have brewed in my life some are self-inflicted storms, and some storms I just didn't see coming, sis. You know the shepherd, when he stands out there in the flock, one thing about that shepherd is he's always looking on the horizon for trouble. I don't know if I'm going to make it, Brother Norman. I'm trying my best to not to behave, but I swan it. I feel like climbing up in that crow's nest and swan diving down tonight. I'm here to tell you tonight that he's always looking on the horizon. He's always looking for what's best and the trouble impending on the other side. I'm glad I got somebody who is looking out for me. Honey, there's times when the storms come and they don't catch the shepherd off guard. He sees it when it's coming and he calls it like he sees it. Honey, child of God, hear me and hear me well. Honey, there are watchmen that God has designed for this very church tonight. Uh, they come in the form of deacons uh, and they come in the form of preachers. Uh, and these watchmen have a high authority uh, and they're placed high up on the wall. Uh, and honey, when they look out uh, and they see trouble, uh, just because you can't see it uh, don't mean it ain't there. Uh, and when the shepherd uh, is still speaking in that still small voice, uh, it's up to you to adhere to that voice. Uh, if the Lord says there's trouble, uh, trust him there's trouble on the horizon. And if his word says he's coming back soon, trust him, he's coming back soon for the flock. Amen. I understand there's been times where the storm has raged. Um, anybody don't like thunder or lightning in here? Amen. There's grown folk and small folk in here that don't like that stuff. Well, we was raised in Burke County. What can I say? And, and brother, when the, thorn, when the storm started, that's when we got outside. I mean, I, and I wasn't outside by myself. Mom and Dad said, let's go to the front porch. I was like, man. That must be what we do when thunderstorms hit, amen. And mama said there's two kinds of lightning, amen. There's that heat lightning and then there's that streaking lightning. She said you can watch all the heat lightning you want to, but that streaky stuff, you better watch out for that. And every time the streaky stuff would start, I remember I'd get closer to my daddy and closer to my mama because I was scared. I was uncertain of what was about to happen. Spiritually speaking, when I see streaky lightning all over the place, that's when I get close to the Lord. That's when I get close to his bosom. And honey, what he does is he 
steals my heart tonight. I, I don't mean he steals it like a thief. I, I mean he takes it and he puts it back into control. I, honey, I have found out I, when I am near unto the shepherd, I, there's nothing that can get to me. I, I'm glad tonight I, for the shepherd that protects me, I, for the one who steals my heart, I, for the one I, that nothing can get to me. I, though the wolf come, I, the Bible says that the shepherd, I, he is not a hireling. I, he won't run off, I, but he'll stand and defend me. I, the one that goes before me I, is my refuge, my tower, I, my strength. I, everything I need, he has stilled me time and time again. Oh, watch here. Not only does he, he steal us, that's what God's voice does when it speaks. It steals us. Oh, but watch this. Then it leads us. The Bible said in 23rd Psalm that he leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me to green pastures. Now you and I tonight, what that means for the Christian, Brother Brian, when I need to eat, he feeds me. When I need to drink, he gives me water. He's never going to lead me to a barren place. If you say, well, preacher, I feel like the Lord's led me here and led me there, and it feels like a barren wasteland I'm in. But you'll always drink from still waters. You know, to a sheep, when you get near waters that are unstable, those that are shaky, those that are uncertain, the shepherd will lead you away from those waters because those waters tend to spook the sheep. You say, well, preacher, it's just water. I know how to swim. Honey, that's what a lot of people said. And when they got in the water, sin took them way further down the drift than they wanted to go. Huh? See, I can swim too, but amen, I'm no match for Niagara Falls. Put me in a barrel if you want to, but amen, even a barrel ain't no match for Niagara Falls. Amen. Just because you can swim don't mean you need to go out there and try it out every once in a while. And if it goes against God, why would you even want to get out there in the water to start out with? I, I'd rather be beside the still waters. I, honey, in the still waters is where God has saturated my soul, I, where he has given me plenty to drink. I, you understand that every time that God not only led his sheep to the, the still waters, I, he led his own men to still waters. I, when Elijah needed a place to drink during the drought, I, he sent him to the brook Cherith. I, when you look up the brook Cherith, I, it is still waters. I, I'm glad even though the water goes dry I, that God's got another place to send us. I, and if nothing else, I know I, that the fact that he saved me, I, I have a wellspring on the inside of me I, that springs up daily. I, and it's still still water. I, honey, I need still in this life. I, and I need to be led near still waters. Oh, but Brother Troy, I get to graze in fields that I never thought I'd graze in. You know, back in the times... Uh, the Jewish custom, they would go into these places that were barren and dry. And these sheep wouldn't know which way to turn. They wouldn't know what to do, but they knew one thing for certain. They better stay with the shepherd. Honey, I know there's a lot of times in our Christian walk, in our Christian life, we just get dry and we get barren. We wonder if we're going to make it, how are we going to do, how are we going to move forward. But honey, that has never been a time for us to leave the fold and go somewhere else. That's been a time to get close to the shepherd tonight. I, you understand every time that God has taken us through barren land, I, that on the other side of that is an oasis. I, honey, that has got more than we need in it. I, I'm here to tell you tonight that one day, I, that still small voice that's been leading me on this side I, will be the still small voice that calls me up up yonder I, and when he calls me home I, I will finally be in the oasis I, I'll leave the barren land of this world I, and I'll step into a far better country I, where there's always green pastures I, all I need to eat I, all I need to drink I, it'll be there for all time oh watch here God's voice this is what happens God's voice not only steals us it leads us but then it reassures us you, you see Brother Brian, I, I'm reminded of something you told me, and it's not just been once, but it's been a few times you've said this. There was a time that you were trying to make a decision about your future and where you was going to work and what you was going to do, and you were waiting for confirmation. You were waiting on the Word of God to tell you exactly what to do and when to do it. All the way over in Elizabeth, Tennessee, was a man. I mean, he's got about seven foot legs. He's got about two foot torso by the name of Nathan Jennings. He's just standing over there, minding the Lord, searching out what God would have said. And here, over here in Shelby, North Carolina, was a little sheep. 
that just needed to hear a word of confirmation. I just needed to be reassured of what to do. I just needed to hear a word from the God I, of heaven that would say, listen, I, I know the plans and the thoughts I have for you. I, a plan to prosper. I, a plan to go forth. I, I have your best interests at heart. I, and here comes Nathan preaching a word. I, and as he preaches it, Brian I, gets confirmation like he's never had before. I, at the conclusion of that service, I, he went back in the fellowship hall I, and he cornered on Nathan in the corner over there. I, I didn't know if he was about to have a fight I, or what was about to happen. But Nathan wasn't getting out of that corner I, until Brian had something to say. I, and he said, Brother, I want to thank you I, for preaching the word of God. I, it gave me reassurance. I, it gave me exactly what I needed. I, I'm ready to make the move that God said I could do. I, and here he sits tonight. I, and God gave him what he needed. I, and he sure, I, hallelujah, I, he's got that reassurance. I, I imagine every day he goes into the workplace. I, he's surrounded by Christian folk. I, they get to talk about God on a regular basis. I, it ain't dirty jokes. I, it ain't what's happening down at the snack bar. I, hey, but it's about God. I, and there's people in his place I, and people all around his life that God's blessing. You say, preacher, I want some of that. I, well, then trust that voice. I, it'll reassure you. I, you may be in the valley of decision tonight, I, wondering which way to go. I, should I or should I not? I, hear from the word of God tonight. I, he's reassuring his children. I, and if you need assurance, I, all you must do is ask of God tonight. Listen, he, he reassures us. He steals us. He leads us. And he reassures us. Now watch here. This is where it gets good. I'm making good time. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. It steals us. It leads us. It reassures us. Oh, but then I like this. It comforts us. Now you say, preacher, you kind of went over that already. No, 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 no. There's a something about being comforted. Uh, listen, there's times in the midst of reassurance I need his presence in my life. The Bible shows us in this text here that we know his voice and he is known of us. The text also shows us that there's only one way to him. The text shows us that a hireling is not a shepherd. That the hireling sees the wolf and he runs, but the shepherd stays. I'm glad for a shepherd that stays. You know what comforts me more than anything? When everybody else leaves, he stays. I, I got comfort in this very thing. When everybody else leaves and forsakes his word by his promise and his own declaration... Honey, I'll never leave nor forsake you. I, honey, I'm glad for the Lord I, when he walks through the valley of the shadow with me. I, how he comforts me. I, honey, how the rod and staff, they guide me and comfort me all the days of my life. I, honey, I have the assurance I, of comfort by his word. I, there's been times he's spoken to my spirit and, and not only reassured me, but he's comforted me. I, honey, I'm glad for the times I, that he's held me in his arms I, when nobody else cared, I, when everybody else ran off. I, He's the God that stays. He's the God that cares. He's the God that's wrapped me up several times over. I'm glad tonight that he's comforted me in times of sorrow, in times of sadness. He's been the assurance of comfort in my life tonight. Oh, but watch here. It gets better. Not only does it comfort us, but it calms us. You see, in my lifetime, even I've been antsy about some things. I've been all over the place about this thought and that thought. Honey, tonight I wasn't sure where to preach until I walked in the back door. And honey, let me say this about what to preach. Sometimes you think, well, preacher, you've had all week to study. You've got all this. You've got all that. You've got the Bible. What more do you need? Honey, let me say this. If it's that easy, everybody would do it. Yeah, man. But I'm glad for the times that he's come by and he's calmed me. I, I sat over there in my office I came in the back door and I thought, God, you better do something. I mean, we're getting closer and closer to choir practice. We get to choir practice. I'm focusing on singing your songs. And God, I need a word for you. And just about that time, he slips in. He puts his arm around me and says, buddy, why don't you sit this one out? I got this tonight. I'm glad that when God takes over a service, when God takes over a service, that takes me out of the way. I, and honey, if God shows up I, and he is present, I have the calmness to know I, that he will feed his people, I, that he will reassure his people. I, honey, that he will give us what we need tonight. I, I'm glad I, that he calms me in the midst of a storm, I, that he's the one that gives me what I need. I, and he assures me. I, and I talked with him this morning. I, and honey, I had something on my heart about 3.30 this morning. I, I said, God, I don't know what it is, but I need 
need you to meet it. Uh, and would you know in my bedroom over at 1511 Lackey, uh, I had one eye open, my hair was up one side, uh, and drew out this side of my mouth. Uh, and yet God came right where I was, uh, and he calmed me in the midst of it all. Uh, I'm glad for a God that calms me. Watch your last one. This is what God will do. God's voice will convict you. Ooh, I saved that for the last. I don't want to kill a meeting, but buddy, let me tell you something. When conviction starts, it starts doing something to people. It makes them antsy. Uh, it gets them up. It gets them moving. It gets them out of the way. Honey, it gets them just to where they get to holding on to something tighter than they've ever held on to it before. Honey, I saw what conviction does. You know what conviction does on Sunday morning? I, I mean, I heard a pew near snap back over here the other morning. You know why? Because, buddy, when somebody's got a hold of it, and they're twisting, and they're turning, and they're trying every way not to move, and all of a sudden God said, you can't. Oh, you better let go because I'm getting ready to take you places you've never been before. I, all of a sudden to see him give up I, and walk unto it. Let me say this. I, the God that loves you and calms you I, and reassures you, I, honey, it stills the storm. Let me say that's the same God that will convict you over your problems and sins. He loves you enough. The Bible says that he loves us enough to chastise us. If he doesn't chastise us, we're none of his. Let me say this. The Bible shows us in John 10 that I'm one of his sheep. But if he can't correct me, I'm not one of his. If you can't correct a sheep, I've seen them, brothers, what they do in the shepherd field is they'll kick them out and they'll send them on their own way. You say, well, preacher, that's awful. Do they not try to get back in? But every time they try to get back in, the shepherd pushes them out because it'll sow discord in the church. It'll sow discord in their little flock. Let me say this. You've got one that's got discord and angst in their heart. It affects the entirety of the room. You got somebody that's just got an attitude, got a problem with everything going on, they will affect the entirety of the flock. Oh, no, preacher, don't worry. If it works like that at the workplace, it works like that at church. If it works like that at your house, it works like that at church. You can rest assured of this we're all imperfect people, and we got problems, we got bad days, we got attitudes, and we need adjustments here and there. But, honey, rest assured of this you better be able to adjust yourself before God does. Because when God gets done adjusting you, you won't be able to sit down for two weeks. And if you don't know what that means, amen, you've never been lit up to the wire house before, amen. If somebody needs to take you back out to the shed house one more time and remind you of what it is, honey, God can certainly do it for you. I'd much rather be able to humble myself and do what God said than have God do it. Now listen, I, I've said it before, ain't nobody like my daddy. When that belt come out of them jean loops, boy, I'm telling you, it made a sound. That, that belt stood to attention, and bless God, when he brought that thing down, it cut down to the bone. Amen. I mean, down to the morrow, it felt like. I mean, bless God, it, sometimes he hit me. I mean, it felt like it went all the way through me. It radiated on the other side of my body. You say, well, preacher, that's pretty rough. That's pretty bad. Boy, I'm glad he done it. It turned me into a better person. Amen. 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 I feel better for it. <laughs> I didn't like it back then. Don't get me wrong. But nobody likes getting corrected. Nobody likes getting chastised in the moment. It's down the road where you start appreciating those things. You say, preacher, that voice. Will, play me something soft. That voice. That voice, what, is it, what does it do? It convicts me. You say, well, preacher, now, I've heard a voice, but the voice I've heard is nothing like what you're talking about. Well, let me tell you something. There's two voices. you got God's voice, and you have the enemy's voice. The Bible says in verse number 10 of chapter 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life, and they may have life more abundantly. So let me make it very clear. Where the Bible shows us God's voice steals us, Satan's voice rushes us. You ever been in the valley of decision and you felt rushed? You just, man, if I just make this decision, it'll all go away. If I just move like this, it'll make everything better. If I just go, 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 go. When you're getting rushed and you're getting pushed, that's the enemy's voice. Where God's voice leads you, Satan's voice pushes you. See, you can get pushed in the wrong direction if you ain't careful. You'll think it's of God because it's what you want. I like when God agrees with me, but it don't always work like that. A lot of times, I'm going to change what I think and go with what God thinks. Satan's voice will push you. The enemy who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, he's the one that pushes. And where God's voice reassures us, Satan's voice frightens us. Puts panic all over you. Makes you anxious. And every time you try to do something, you just get wired up. You can't just, it just can't be calm. 
get wired up, you get excited, you say things you shouldn't say, you act a certain way, you do certain things, and before you know it, you're just all anxious because you've been out of shape when God never wanted you to be out of shape. God wanted to put you in shape. See, there's things that frighten us that put us in a way that we shouldn't be. And a lot of times when we're frightened, and we're pushed, and we feel like something's pulling us in the opposite direction, that's where the devil likes to slip in, like the wolf. The Bible says, beware the wolf, because there are false teachers and false prophets that come like wolves in sheep's clothes. They look the part, they talk the part, they act the part, but the truth of the matter is, you can't change their nature, they're a wolf. See, there comes a time when God's voice comforts you. Satan's voice will weary you. God's voice will calm you. Satan's voice obsesses you. God's voice convicts you. Satan's voice will condemn you. You know, I'm hard enough on myself. There's a lot of times that I'll talk about all the bad that is in me and all the bad that I am and all this. And I realize a lot of times, Sister Lindsay, that's just the devil. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the devil tries to always condemn God's children. He always throws up our past. Always comes on the back front and says, Man, don't you remember when you used to do this and you used to like that? And boy, every once in a while, those things you used to be addicted to, you get a taste for it one more time and you think, Man, I, I'd like to go back there one more time. Child of God, I, there is nothing better than where you are in God right now. I, better is one day in His courts I, than a thousand elsewhere. I, I'm glad for where I am. I, and I've come too far to go back now. The devil's going to try to confuse you. He's the author of confusion. But he's also the father of all lies. And honey, he has been lying ever since he came on the scene in Genesis. And he hasn't stopped. And he's not going to stop. And the devil will use your own mind. And he'll even use scripture to try to confuse you. And to make God out to be a lie. But God's not a lie. He is the light. And in him there's no variable, no shadow of turning. The Bible says he's the good shepherd. A good shepherd wants all that he can best for his flock. The hireling just is the babysitter, but the wolf is the enemy who's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And child of God, let me tell you something. Spiritually, he can kill, steal, and destroy before he touches your body. And the devil, if he can get your soul and he can get in your mind and he can get in your heart and he can cause havoc there, he's got you. But take comfort in this. As long as we're near the good shepherd, the Bible says that the hireling runs, but the shepherd will not move. He stands firm over his flock. That staff has pulled me out of some rough places. I'm reminded of a video saw not too long ago there's this boy that comes running up and you see an animal of some sort down in this big old crack I mean a huge crack, you may have seen it and all you see is a pair of legs and a fuzzy tail sticking up and it's like what is that? this little boy goes down and he grabs that thing by the hind legs and jerks it up and all of a sudden you realize it's a sheep and what does it do? it takes off running and it dives right back in the crack head first I mean just right back in there, you say <laughs> Oh, that's silly. What's our excuse? What's our excuse? We know better. We've tasted. We've seen that God's good. We know He's a good shepherd. So why turn to anything else? Save Him tonight. Tonight, I want to give you an invitation to this old-fashioned altar. You say, preacher, why? Oh, you might be here tonight. You might be one of God's sheep. You might need some reassurance in your life tonight. You might be here and you might be going some things that nobody else knows about but you and God and you need God to comfort you tonight. Maybe God spoke to your heart and maybe He's convicting you over some things tonight. Or maybe tonight that still small voice that you used to hear, you don't hear it like you used to. Maybe it's been drowned out by the world and by the things that God has not designed for your life. Oh, you might be here tonight and you say, Preacher, I'm one of those sheep. I just need some reassurance in my life. 
Maybe you're here tonight. Maybe something else has been leading you. But you need God to lead you tonight. He's the good shepherd. And he's able to lead us and to guide us into all truth. The Bible shows us that he's the good shepherd. That he knows his sheep. And that we know his voice. And he says we're known of him. I'm glad that I know him tonight. I'm glad for the assurance that I know that I know that I know when he speaks. You say, preacher, does it sound like thunder and lightning coming down? No. Does it sound like a big old fire and a big old earthquake? No. Just like it was for Elijah. It's a still, small voice. This altar is open tonight. If you have a need, if you've got some lost in your heart, maybe you come down and pray for revival tonight. We need to be in prayer for a revival. Pray for those that are lost and undone and out there in a wayward way. We need to pray for sheep that are out there lost and otherwise will not come home unless God draw them. Would you help me pray tonight? Lord, I want to tell you that I love you. God, I thank you that I know your voice tonight. Lord, I thank you for the times that you spoke into my life. God, how your word's been true and how it settles me and how it stands my life. God, in the times of chaos and the times of anxiety, the times of depression, Lord, you have spoken to my spirit. God, I'm thankful tonight that I know it. Oh, God, I'm so delighted when I hear your voice. Oh, God, it pleases my soul to know that I have spoken to you. God, I pray for the church tonight, God, that we would be the sheep that you called us to be. God, I pray for the one that strayed, went on their own path. God, I pray that you would save that soul. God, I pray for the backslider tonight, God, that's that sheep that will not listen, that will not obey, and will not give in. God, I pray tonight, Lord, oh God, they would do it before it's too late. God, I pray for those that need reassurance tonight, those that need calming, those that need a still, small voice to speak to them. God, I pray tonight for the one that needs calm, the one that needs comfort. God, I pray for the one that needs a divorce. And God, you have your way in that church. Have your way in this fold. God, I count myself privileged just to be the under shepherd. But Lord, even as an under shepherd, I've needed a good shepherd. Oh God, to come by my way. God, to straighten up my path. Oh God, chastise me, correct me. God, I'm thankful that you still care enough to do that. I'm thankful tonight, Lord, that you love me enough to speak to me. God, if you never say another word from here to eternity, it's just been a privilege to have talked all the thoughts we've had. God, I have the assurance that when I wake up in the morning, and I begin our conversation as we always do, that God, you'll be there. I believe you'll be there waiting on me like you were at the church here tonight. God, I'm thankful tonight that when I call on your name, that I'm not speaking to a ceiling or a pulpit or a floor. I'm speaking to you. That's the God in whom I serve tonight. I'm glad I belong to his fold. How many sheep are in his fold? It doesn't matter. I can tell you in his fold, he knows the hair on every head in his fold. That's how good he is. We love and appreciate every one of you tonight. We thank you for being out this way. We thank you for uh, 
Amen. Just being attentive to the service tonight. We pray that God would bless you throughout the rest of the week. Amen. We pray for those who will be traveling for safe grace and mercies. Uh, amen. We pray that heads would go about. Amen. And do that what it's sent out to do. Uh, amen. Again, we want to invite you tonight. Uh, if you've got some time, you can stay for a cupcake or a thing of ice cream. Uh, whatever's back there, amen, for Jeff's birthday. That would be a blessing and a help uh, unto him. It would encourage him. Uh, amen. We just love this church, and he couldn't wait to get here tonight uh, to celebrate with his church family. He loves his church family more than he does his own family, I believe. Amen. And that's all right, as long as he loves somebody. Amen. I wondered if he could love anybody as many as he is sometimes. Amen. But we sure do love and appreciate each and every one of you tonight. Don't forget this coming Sunday morning, Brother Ruben Casey will be with us. That's not a time to skip church. It's not a time to miss church. That's a time to be here. Uh, let's represent Way of the Cross Free Will Baptist Church well. Uh, thankful that he's coming. Amen. We're just so honored and glad. Pray for all the visitors. They come back and maybe invite someone with them. Uh, amen. I was counting with Sister Barbara the other day. She said easily, if everybody shows up at one time, we're somewhere between a neighborhood of about 75, 80 people on a regular basis. That's God, amen. That's not this preacher. That's not the choir. That's not anybody else. That's just what God can do. I'm waiting for the day God fills it up to, amen, where we need chairs and speakers all over the building, amen. I believe God can do that, amen. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't have even told you, amen. I believe it's possible, amen. Uh, don't forget about the ladies' auxiliary. Don't forget the sign-up sheets in the back. Wednesday night dinner coming on the 28th. If you're able to be here, amen, dinner's going to start at 530. Uh, baked spaghetti. Uh, salad, some breadsticks will be back there. We pray that you come uh, participate in that. It's going to be a great, tremendous service on that night. Last service we'll have before revival gets here. Homecoming on the 25th, Brother Colby Davis will be with us. Uh, also on the sign-up sheets, the Parsons family. There is one slot, or there was one slot. If there's not, great and wonderful. If there is room and you'd like to put your name on there, please do so uh, with the meal and the name and all that time you're going to do it. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. Barbecue shirts, amen. They're going to be ordered tomorrow. Make sure you bring your money Sunday. Sister Emily couldn't be here tonight, so do bring it with you Sunday. We'll get all that turned in. We're going to go uh, tomorrow if she's filling up to it and try to get everything situated and done there. Uh, we're excited about it. Looking forward to the barbecue. Uh, amen. If you have tickets or need tickets, please get with me before you leave tonight. Get with Brother Brian if you're going to be turning those in. Remember to write on each ticket what they're actually wanting. Uh, amen. And collect the money, and we'll get that turned in. That way we can make our order more accurate and more fulfilling. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. I forget anything else. All right. Well, ice cream's calling my name. Amen. That's a, that's a free will Baptist thing all day. Amen. Let's stand to our feet together. We'll dismiss in the house. Amen. Here comes the next preacher. Amen. I like that story, bud. Yes, sir. Amen. Shouts, too. That's good stuff. Amen. We love and appreciate you. Amen. If you can, we'd love to have you stay. Amen. Get you a slice of cake, a cupcake, or a thing of ice cream. Amen. It's good for the soul. Amen. It helps you go to sleep real good, too. Amen. Amen. Brother Troy, would you just miss in a word of prayer, brother?